Yo, how's everybody doing? It's the Hawking Regime here, and today coming at you guys with a Talk of the Hawk video. And I really apologize for not getting any Talk of the Hawk videos out really over the past couple of weeks. Been a bit busy on each individual respective day of the Seahawks games. Uh, last week in particular it was like Christmas Eve, so a lot of things were happening. But we're back at it now, and uh, doing a pregame analysis video, obviously, of the Seahawks Week 17 matchup against the San Francisco 49ers. And normally, the way I like to do these pregame analysis videos just go over the injuries of the game as well as some of the key matchups so um uh san francisco 49ers obviously really struggled this year um the seahawks nfc west champs and really in all honesty with this uh, win today in the fifth in, in the fifth consecutive season for seattle and winning 10 plus games uh, they really put themselves in good positions to have success unfortunately this year injuries have really gotten in the way of Seattle and, and their success as a whole and that's really unfortunate because I think they have the talent as you know as much talent as anybody in the league to compete at the highest level and they've you know obviously proven that by going back to back Super Bowls a couple years back and uh, it's great that they've put themselves in a position to make the playoffs at the very least um, and they could make the second seed today if they come away at the victory and Atlanta loses but I'm not banking on it uh, if I'm just I would just be pleased with Seattle getting back on track mentally and winning a game against San Francisco in San Francisco a team that they've had quite a bit of success against going 5 and 0 against the San Francisco 49ers over the last 5 meetings so um, basically two and a half years and you know Seattle you know with the injuries to Thomas Rawls that doesn't help at all I don't know how big of an injury he really uh, <clears throat> had last week uh, against the Arizona Cardinals, but um, you know that's obviously a problem. And uh, they, in this article in particular, they discuss kind of the pressure of DeForest Buckner right there, and kind of an improvement of Colin Kaepernick and kind of trying to contain him. Um, and the Seahawks run game, looking back to get on track, which obviously doesn't help with Thomas Rawls kind of being ha had a little bit of a shoulder injury. I don't know if he won't play or if he will play. Uh, we will see what happens. They did sign, if I'm not mistaken, Kelvin Taylor out of the University of Florida. I think he was on. Uh, I think he was bouncing around a little bit last year. Not certain, but uh, I think they did sign him last week. And you know he could get some carries. Who knows? Um, but against San Francisco, it's all about getting the confidence back for Seattle. In my personal opinion. Other than that, though, I don't think there's a lot of crazy injuries for Seattle this upcoming week. A lot of guys, hopefully, uh, are you know trying to get healthy at this point of the year. You know, fortunately, you get Michael Bennett back, which is awesome. C.J. Procise is one key figure that we'd really like to see back in Seattle's offense for certain to get things back on track, but that's just not going to be the case. Um, Russell Wilson actually had a phenomenal week last week, throwing for 350 yards, four touchdown passes. Uh, unfortunately, most of that was in the second half as he really struggled to get going in the first half of football, which, you know, ultimately <clears throat> didn't decide the game, but played a factor in the Seahawks' loss that day. So uh, that could have you know, been good for Seattle to obtain the second seed and would have been really nice, but at the end of the day, Seahawks weren't good enough. So um, no, nothing crazy, though. You see you know, Thomas Rawls. I don't know how big of a shoulder injury it really is for him, but uh, he could go today, so we'll see what, that, what that's like. But really, I think today in San Francisco is all about getting the confidence back in Seattle. It's such a big factor in the success of teams in the NFL. Um, if you can, you know, get, if you can obtain that type of, you know, confidence in your game, uh, especially with a team like Seattle, you can actually do some great damage. And this is one thing I was kind of thinking about recently. Um, if you look at Seattle's numbers, you know, they've been the leading, you've been, they've been leading the league in uh, scoring defense for the past couple of years. I think this is the first year they won't be leading in scoring defense, um, you know, most likely. Uh, but you just kind of it just makes you wonder like imagine if this offense was kind of as efficient or close to as efficient as a team like uh you know the Falcons or the Cardinals of last year or the Patriots or uh, the Broncos with Peyton Manning's day when they were you know in their prime I mean obviously it won't be that efficient ever because of the fact that the line just isn't great enough but um if they could just you know improve the efficiency a little bit more and get more out of their offense it, it you know it makes you really makes you wonder if their defense, you know, has to carry them as much as they have over the past couple of years. You know, their defense really kept them in some games and helped them win it, uh, especially 
and, you know, against Green Bay in the NFC Championship game a couple years back, with Russell Wilson throwing four interceptions. Like, that's that's a really tough thing for any team to overcome. But because they had that defense and because they were just good enough on special teams and made some great plays, they were able to come away with the victory that game. So it just makes you wonder if this offense can ever get on track with the talent they have. You know, guys like Jimmy Graham, you'd think you'd be able to use him a little bit more. Doug Baldwin, obviously. Uh, CJ Procise when he's healthy. Um, it, it's tough with the line. You know, the line is the core, the base of the defense. But it just makes you wonder what the possibilities are like for Seattle if they don't have to rely on such a crazy, uh, you know, crazy effective, you know, defense that's you know hungry for turnovers and you know great at st- at slowing down drives. Um, because in this case, you don't have Earl Thomas. You don't have t- some of those players on the defense that can make you carry. So is the offense going to step up and make this team, you know? take a take a deep run into the playoff this year you know do they have the potential to do that I think they have the potential to do that but I think it all starts with confidence if they can see a spark and maybe in this game uh, offensively I think that can really go a long way unfortunately Seattle's also gonna have to prove that they can win on the road because they're not gonna get the number one overall seed and it's looking like they're probably not gonna get the second overall seed but uh, that's just my two cents so you know let me know what you guys think about that uh, but that will be the conclusion of the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. You know, Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more of these Talk with the Hog videos. I try and come out with every, uh, or with a Talk with the Hog video every you know, Sunday or any day. Seattle Seahawks play, whether it's, a pre- whether it's a preseason, regular season, or postseason game. And I do both pregame and postgame analysis. So expect a postgame analysis video following the Seattle Seahawks Week 17 NFL matchup. Final game of the 2016-2017 regular season against the San Francisco 49ers in San Francisco. Once again, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, and yep, thanks for watching.